I just broke $20,000 in stock footage sales. Can I get a what, what? What, what? I never thought that I would earn that much from selling stock footage, which is precisely why I'm making today's video. So all of you can see my steps for success. Even if you don't personally wanna create stock footage, it's just fun to learn about. Cue the montage. Okay, some upfront disclaimers. First off, if you haven't watched my video in which I celebrated making my first $10,000 in stock sales and this topic actually interests you, go and watch that before this video. This isn't me just trying to get more views out of you. I am going to be talking about very different information in this video. So if you actually wanna learn the ins and outs of selling stock footage, then you wanna watch both videos. Pause now, go watch the other one. Secondly, I've been assuming that people actually know what stock footage is, but some people have been confused. So let's quickly define it. Stock footage in its basic form is just content that I or others go out and film with the intention of uploading to licensing websites for complete strangers to use. I film, edit, upload, and then sell that content. Anyone can license it for a fee, obviously. So my stock footage could be used in a commercial, a feature length film, or honestly, anything utilizing video content. And with that, disclaimers are over. It took me from May 6th, 2019 to August 27th, 2021 to make my initial $10,000 in stock footage sales. That's 844 days. And who knows how many hours of work I actually put into all that content. Like it's, it's way too high of a number. But it only took me 338 days to bring in my next $10,000 in sales. I think this is the part where I'm supposed to say like, cha-ching, you know, money in the bank account. That's awesome. 844 days for my first 10,000 versus 338 days for my second 10,000. That's a massive difference. That's an average of $11.84 a day or $29.58 a day. It's possible that I was getting smaller sales for that initial $10,000, but the reality is that I simply had way less content online when I initially started out. When I released the first $10,000 breakdown video, I had 4,442 clips online, but I now have 6,081 clips online, which is like saying that I've planted 6,081 seeds in hopes that they'll sprout. More seeds equals more produce, or in this case, more content, more sales. Yes, we just use stock footage of plants to drive that silly analogy home. I bring up the quantity of clips that I have online because stock footage isn't a set it and forget it revenue stream for me. Sure, you could upload 100 clips, stop there, and slowly bring in some sales over time, but I've been planting as many seeds as I can because I want more potential crops to grow. Okay, I'm done with the seed analogy thing. We're, we're moving on from that. Last month, I put out an all call on our team's Instagram page for what questions people had about my stock footage journey. And we got folks to send in their questions via video. If you want similar opportunities in the future, follow us on the gram. Hey Jacob, question for you. Uh, what is the quantity of content that you actually have to have in order to make some sort of passive income with these sites? That was a great question. Difficult to answer. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I, I've got over 6,000 stock clips online and I make a fair amount of money doing so, but a lot of those clips actually don't sell. Uh, you know, I don't know a specific number, but maybe 15% of the clips actually sell. So we upload a lot to try to get sales and try to find the right clips that people want. But if you, you know, make really good clips that magically fit what people want to buy, you only need to upload a couple hundred or something instead of 6,000. So really difficult quality over quantity. How do you make time to capture stock content? The really easy answer is I set time aside on my calendar at the beginning of my day and I spend 30 minutes, an hour, two hours doing stock content. Depends on how busy our team is, but I build it into my schedule because I've seen how much money I can make through it. So it's a very important part of my revenue stream. Put something on your calendar, make it so you can't ignore it. Plan your work, work your plan. Hey Jacob, I was just wondering, how do you keep track of your stock content library? Like how do you make sure you don't have the same dog photos or videos or the same waterfall shots uh, over and over again? 
How do I keep stock of my stock? Great question. Uh, in terms of like, have I filmed the Space Needle multiple times? You know, I just have like kind of a running total in the back of my mind of, you know, don't do that too many times. You've already uploaded clips of that. So not very scientific or organized in that capacity. I upload everything to one platform and that platform distributes out to all the other platforms. So if I upload the shot of my dog Rusty and then I upload it again, that one platform will actually tell me, hey, you've actually uploaded this file name before? Can't do that. Easy. My question to you is how do I make money off stock footage? I personally own a drone and a DSLR camera and I just wanna know your thoughts about that. That question, really encapsulates like everything that this video and the prior video were about. So hopefully you're getting a lot of good content here. If I could boil it down to one piece of advice, it's create unique content. Just because all the people in your area go to the tourist traps and film those tourist traps because they think, you know, this is really popular, it's going to sell, that content is already probably covered versus your local library may not have a shot of it. And it may be featured in the news one day. So that might be a unique shot that only you have access to. Come up with what is unique to you and it will sell. Hey Jacob, my question is, what's your best selling stock clip so far? My most popular clip has sold 177 times for a total of $1,000. Sorry folks, I would share the actual clip but the shot was a collaborative effort and my creative partner, understandably, doesn't wanna share the secret to our highest selling clip. I'll share tons of others, but not that one. Hey Jacob, we're wondering if you've ever seen your stock footage out in the wild. Despite the fact that I have so many sales, I've only seen a few of my stock clips out in public videos. The stock sites don't tell you who used your content, why they licensed it, where it goes. I know we've had a few aerial shots used in Hallmark films, and I did see that YouTube legend Mark Rober used one of our stock clips, but that's about all I've seen. So if you see shots of Rusty running down the beach, let me know. In addition to all those video submissions, we did have a few folks just type in what their questions were. So first question, do you see trends with what types of shots do best? There are some general trends, like tough to capture content will always sell better than easy to capture content. Translation, aerial shots, time lapses, and location specific content will always sell better than hyper generic content that you can easily film around your home. How do you plan for capturing stock footage in the middle of daily work? I have the luxury of running my own production company. So I dedicate a few hours each week to capturing and uploading stock footage. I've easily spent 20 plus hours some weeks working on stock content, but sometimes I only spend an hour or two. You definitely need to set time aside to create content, otherwise it's just not gonna happen. Plan your work, work your plan. And the most asked question of all time, what site? Do you upload your content to? I upload my content to blackbox.global, which is a middleman aggregate site. And what this means is that when I upload my content to Blackbox, I assign metadata, and then they ship out my content to all of the big players in the stock footage market. As a result, Blackbox does take a portion of my sales, but there's no way that I'm going to upload my content to X different platforms. Like I, I just don't have time to find every single one and put it on every single one. So I'm fine with losing a little bit of money if it means making a lot in the long run. Another cool component to the black box platform is that I can collaborate with other creatives and we split the profits. For example, I color grade footage for an aerial pilot friend of mine and I sign all of the metadata. They go out, fly, capture some great content, send me all the footage, and then I edit it. I get it all uploaded to the platform, and as a result, I get 45% of the shared sales, and they get 55% for actually having gone out and captured the content with their aerial rig. If you are genuinely interested in stock footage sales, you should join the Black Box Facebook group and read through their success guide. It's a lot to take in at the get-go, but it is super helpful and just a mandatory part of the experience. How do you get started? It's a long-term game. Start it as a side hustle, slowly build up your portfolio in the background, 
and start to see the sales come in. You're not going to get sales in the first week or maybe even month or two. Set small goals, watch the money come in down the line. And final question, do you upload content you've filmed for clients? No, no we do not. We do not cross that line. We work with clients, we film them footage, they get footage, done. Go out and film stock content, upload it to stock sites, done. Two separate pools, no. No, 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 don't do it, no. Okay, to wrap up this video, I've got five high level insights for you. First off, of my 6,081 clips, I've only sold 1,005 of them, meaning that only 16% of my stock footage library has ever been purchased. With that said, a lot of those clips have repeat sales. Which leads me to insight number two. My top selling clip of all time has had 177 repeat sales for nearly $1,000. It's worth pointing out that I only have a 20% stake in this clip, which means that someone else captured the content, they sent it to me, I color graded it, I sent it back, they handled all the metadata and actual uploading, boom. This collaborative setup is part of why I use Blackbox. I'm able to work with others so that I'm not fully responsible for all of my content from start to finish. I only focus on the things that I wanna focus on. No, we're not sponsored by, by Blackbox. Are, are we still now? No, maybe next video. I'm just trying to transparently share with all of you what has worked for me. Insight number three is that the most I've made in a single month is $1,506.51. That's a lot of money. That's rent money, yo. That's more than just groceries. That's a lot. But I typically average between six and 800 a month. Insight number four is that if you aren't already subscribed, you should do so now. I sincerely try to share a lot of behind the scenes insights, whether it's navigating the stock footage market, working with high level video clients, or running a successful video production company. Shameless plug, you should subscribe and tell all your friends. And the final insight, number five, is that if you want to create a stock footage library so that you can slowly bring in sales over time, set realistic goals for yourself. Schedule an hour or two on your calendar each week so that you can work on your content. Seriously, just a couple hours each week will build up a library over the course of a year. It takes time, skill, and a little bit of dumb luck to profit from stock footage sales. So set time aside to plant your seeds now so that they have time to grow in the coming months. Yes, I'm sorry I lied, I brought back the analogy. Make stock footage. Go do your own sales, like and subscribe. Thank you. High five.